Disappointing loss for the Boston Celtics falling at home at TD Garden 99-94 to to the Utah Jazz. I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Mike Petralia and Joe Sway Pavone. Aside from the very start of this game where the teams were trading three-pointers, the offense for the Celtics was not able to get on a roll. Besides Marcus Smart, who had 29 points and looked like he had a lot of fight in him, at some point he was the only guy with some fight in him on the floor. Why were the Celtics not able to get into a flow offensively? Celtics were not tough on offense. Usually, and I asked Jason Tatum this after the game, when you're tough, that really usually equates to people thinking you're tough on defense. Well, sometimes you have to be tough on offense and cut to the basket. And Marcus Smart had a moment late or midway through the third quarter where he got after Daniel Tice. And I asked Marcus Smart about that, and he said, look, I wanted to get across to Daniel Tice. You deserve to score at the basket. Mm -hmm. And the Celtics did not do enough of that here on Friday night in the loss to the Utah Jazz. Yeah, you know, that's a good example, Travis. I feel like uh, guys like in that situation just needed to light a fire under him, you know? And that's what Marcus Smart tried to do. Absolutely. I thought defensively the Utah Jazz just came out so poised. They really disrupted the Celtics, and they never really found that rhythm. You saw you know, stretches of it, especially in the second half, the first half, of course, the first quarter. But you never saw the Celtics really buckle down offensively and find that rhythm, that groove. And that's a huge testament to what Utah does defensively. They made them very uncomfortable, and you saw yeah. that throughout the entire night. And Brad Stevens also said in referencing the 27-16 lead that the Celtics got out to, a bit of fool's gold. Right. That's a term that Doc Rivers used to always love to use when uh, the Celtics would get out to big leads because the three ball right. was going down. Right. And that's kind of what the situation here was early Friday night, yeah. and they couldn't sustain it. 17 three-pointers. Yeah, and I'm going to preface my next point with the fact that obviously Jalen Brown and Gordon Hayward were out of the game forcing two of the Celtics bench players into the starting lineup, but the bench pr production on Friday night was abysmal. I mean, Brad Wanamaker had a really rough night. Sure, yes. he, he got a couple of buckets to fall, but his plus minus was down in the dumps. Grant Williams couldn't make open shots. Ennis Cantor really didn't have his feet under, under him. How concerning is that bench production? How much will they need them to improve to make a run for a top seed in the playoffs? You know, unfortunately, Sarah, I feel like we won't know the answer to that question, the true answer to that question, until this team is completely healthy. And I know, if, I feel like I'm sounding like a broken Fair record point. saying yeah. this, especially the last uh, week or two, or at least the last month or so, but that's really what it boils down to. That's I mean, what Kemba had, just said in the locker room as well, we just need to get Right, healthy. exactly. I mean, you had Shemi Ojale in the starting lineup here. How great would he have been for the second unit in this game? You know, we saw what he did on the road in Cleveland, you know, the way he was able to stretch the floor, what he does defensively, his rebounding game. You know, that adds so much to the second unit. And when you have someone like that in the starting lineup, it just, it really wears you thin. And the other thing I, I would point out here is that the Celtics bench was really affected by the rotations here on Friday night because Brad Stevens, people were wondering why did Jason Tatum sit so long in that second quarter? And he said, look, I've got to take the long approach here with Jason Tatum. Watch his minutes. Uh, and he didn't play for the first nine minutes of yeah. that second quarter. And, you know, they're going to need Jason Tatum to be healthy and 100% uh, come playoff time or as close as you can be. And that means he's going to have to sit in situations where even Brad Stevens tonight said, look, ideally I probably would have put him in a little bit sooner in that second quarter to stop uh, or counter the Utah run, but yeah. I couldn't do it because I was going to make sure Jason Tatum got his rest. The bench needed to step up and they couldn't do it. This right. Garden Report is brought to you by CarShield. Call 800-CAR-6000 and mention code GARDEN or go to carshield.com and use code GARDEN. They're America's number one insurance protection provider. Again, call 800-CAR-6000 and use code GARDEN or carshield.com and use code GARDEN. For all the rest of our Celtics content, head to our website at clnsmedia.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel at CLNS Media.